welcome to the Super Nerds UK podcast, your source for all things pop culture. Alright. <laughs> you laughing at me? It's a quality intro, that. I'll have you know. I, I, for the next try and test it. I spent ages rehearsing that intro. Um, yeah. So, welcome back to the Super right, Nerds podcast. Ben, you've got to get rid of that white thing on your lip. Oh, I'm looking at that all the way through the podcast. Chewy. going, on my way. white stuff on his lip. Ian? Right. I've uh, got no white thing okay. on my lip. Right. <laughs> Welcome to the Super Nerds UK podcast, a bunch of unprofessional bastards, and me. <laughs> <laughs> you can start, God, something just... <laughs> I can't even start my video and stuff, never mind this. <laughs> I... Okay, we're starting. Here we are, we're all sat here, there's four of us, there's me, there's him, there's another guy sitting next to him, and there's another one opposite me. That's right. We're all here. <laughs> <laughs> so... Welcome back to the Super Nerds UK podcast. I say welcome back because I'm assuming you've been here before. If you haven't, welcome. Come in, sit down, take off your shoes. If you're listening on a bus, that might be a bit weird. Please move <laughs> your shoes on. I mean, don't... Do, or on a train. Or on a train. Yeah, that yeah, could be off. That's a little weird. Um, yeah. It's been a while since I've been on one of these. I feel like I forgot what to do. <laughs> um, I, <laughs> this we're week, leaving all this in, by the way. Yeah, this oh yeah, is this, is, this is solid gold. This, yeah. we're, this is, but we're one take wonders here. <clears throat> no editing. Farts, <laughs> everything all left in. <laughs> Burst a lot. Yeah, oh yeah. This week's podcast sees us uh, join forces with the mighty Simon from SLI Gaming to talk about aliens. Not the concept of extraterrestrial life, the film franchise. As fun as that might be, actually. We might yeah. do that in a future we could, podcast. We, we could do that, yeah. <laughs> Just be us sitting here. Do you think aliens exist? No. What's the tea? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be that. Um, yeah, so we're going to talk about the alien franchise because next year... We've got Ridley Scott returning with Alien Covenant, a.k.a. Prometheus 2. We changed the name because no one liked the first one. <laughs> mm. I did. I, I did. did. Well, I, don't, I, don't, give, I, don't, I don't did. blow yeah. your load too early, chaps. We've got a whole podcast to talk about. <laughs> don't make me laugh too much. I'll burst my stitches. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tim's got some stitches in a, a savoury place. <laughs> <laughs> He's essentially a human bagpipe at the moment. <laughs> One, one wrong gust and Tim's I was watching Mock the Week last night and I nearly burst. <laughs> In fact, he's like a haggis. I was, like, I, was, I was laughing. I was laughing so hard. I was literally going, ha ha, ow, ha ha, ow. Really Back to being in a bag. So just, so just a warning. Tim may not finish the episode. Yeah, <laughs> might bleed to death. The irony of talking about aliens while Tim's chest may actually burst open <laughs> is not lost on any of us. In this room, everyone can hear me scream, especially when I burst a stitch. <laughs> We're going to talk about Alien, Aliens, Alien 3, and Alien Resurrection. Not the AVPs, maybe mention them, but uh, mainly the Alien films, and what we think about them, and so on. So let's just start. So what was it, 1978, 79, the first one? Yeah, it was just after Star Wars because it was part of the inspiration of Star Wars. Yeah, it was Dan, Dan mm. O'Bannon based on it was, it was Dark Star that he wrote. John Carpenter. Yeah. And he yes. Yeah. Yeah. So the Alien films kick started in the late seventies with Ridley Scott's first Alien, and it's a horror movie in space. Yes. We moved on to nineteen eighty six with James Cameron's Aliens. Yeah. Which was a Vietnam War movie. Yeah. yeah. Also in space. Yeah. We went to was it ninety two Alien Three? Was it ninety two? Was yeah, it? Yeah, ninety two. Was that late? I think it was. I think it was, 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 was Alien. It was ninety one, ninety two. Um, which was basically again a return to the first movie of a claustrophobic horror film, 
with a bit more it was a bit more of a um, meaning behind the third one I yeah. thought that was the end Alien Resurrection which was a pirate action movie again still in space um, and then that was sort of the end of the Alien movies for quite a while mm. we yeah. had Alien vs Predator and Alien vs Predator Requiem Ugh. which I don't mind those I've not, I've not seen Requiem but Requiem seen... was better than the, the first AVP yeah. I give it that it actually did try to put a bit more heart into it the first AVP was quite close to the comic book, apart from it weighing on Earth. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't mind, I didn't know it was going to Earth. And then the th- finally we had uh, Prometheus in 2012, which was a prequel to the Alien franchise, done by Ridley Scott, returning to the franchise that he started, which was... Uh, it was res- divisive, wasn't it? That's yeah, like- it was. And then... Currently, at the moment, they're filming Alien Covenant, the sequel to Prometheus. So we thought we'd all meet up, have a chat, discuss our love for the Alien films, what we dislike about the Alien films and franchise in general, um, and just just kick it around the park. So then, yeah, like a big sweaty alien egg. <laughs> <laughs> so then, Simon, how did you first discover or come across the Alien films? So this it was when I was younger. So. If anyone knows, there was actual alien action figures out when yeah. we were kids, and this yeah. was like part of this whole thing where these toys were out. Where there was RoboCop toys, there was Terminator toys, and that yeah. there was like no, you know, it, it was like a gateway into it's that like film. Mid nineties, wasn't it? Yeah, um, and I had these toys, and I spoke to my dad, and I said, "You know, what are these off, Dad? I wanted to know what they were off because yeah. they had little action cards <laughs> that come with it, and if they were like clips from the film as well." Drawn over. Yeah. yeah and um, he was like, it's off Aliens and that. And I pleaded with him to see the movie. And it was on one night on Sky. Um, I'll always remember because it was the director's cut, which is the best cut there is of Aliens. And um, it was all on because of Alien War that was going on in London. So that was like a kind of um, an experience. Like a theme park type of thing, wasn't it? Like an it, attraction? Yeah. Wasn't it, yeah, it was an attraction. Yeah, I'd say that. Where people all dressed up, and I think a xenomorph would chase people, and you had colonial marines with you as well. Sounds cool. Talk about where I live. It's not back garden. <laughs> but that was like my gateway into it. As you know, I watched that film um, from beginning to end, and I just fell in love with it. That just instantly became my favorite film of all time. Tim, when did you first come across the Alien franchise? It was also long ago, it's hard to remember. You are old. I know. (laughs) I remember hearing about the Alien films when I was little, and I think the first one I saw was actually Alien 3. My dad got a dodgy pirate copy of it. And because the film was so dark, and the pirate copy was just rubbish, I could hardly see anything apart from a few faces here and there. And then when the alien actually appeared, all you could see was its teeth. (laughs) It was terrible. I I just can't listen to that without thinking it's a pirate copy of the aliens running around with little pirate eye patches (laughs) on it. Little hooks. I'd be hugging your face. (laughs) Little parrot on his shoulder. (laughs) Sorry, sorry, Tim. Just an internal mouth. (laughs) (laughs) Cannons away! <laughs> Strap in buccaneers in space, no one can hear you scream. <laughs> Avast, ye Sigourney Weaver. <laughs> Sounds like a new film we could make. Yeah. Aliens in the Caribbean. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd only seen clips or like the, the trailers of the, uh, the first Alien films. Um, so I think, I, I think I'd seen the third one first, but then eventually when VHS versions of them came to me somehow, I, I watched them all. And then uh, learn to love them. I don't think I'd seen Resurrection until they all came out in a box set on DVD. And a friend of mine bought the whole lot. And we just watched pretty much all of them in order then. And then that's when I really learned to love them. And it was just before I started going to college as well with you, Ian. And uh, I kind of wanted to use the first Alien film as uh, one, of, one of our thoughts, basically. Because oh, right. I thought... That I fell in love with the first one more than I did the others. So I actually liked them in the order there are. As I like the alien one first, second aliens, so on. Diminishing returns for you? They never quite lived up to the, pre- the previous one? Yeah, yeah, basically. But I mean, aliens <clears throat> and alien are very close, you know. The, because there's very different films, it's kind of hard to 
keep them level but you it's know, almost it's, an Evil Dead and Evil Dead 2 thing it's, about it's, them isn't it uh, it's yeah <laughs> do you know when he said Alien yeah. and Aliens are very close if you'd have paused that they're going yeah there's only one letter difference <laughs> <laughs> yeah Ben how did you discover and come across the Alien franchise Um I must have been about five or six and my mum and dad had taped it off the TV and I watched it as I said I've said in previous podcasts as long as there was no sex I could watch whatever I wanted and there's no nudity in Alien so it doesn't matter that apart from the Alien apart from the Alien's beautiful torso wriggling round <laughs> and the fact that its head looks like a big cock <laughs> um, okay. the fact that its head looks like a penis um, yeah <laughs> that's okay have you never noticed that I would say more like a big black rubber dildo. Giga than... says in one of the interviews, yeah. it's like, he's like, the alien's head looks like the tip of a penis. Well, they, they, they <laughs> talk about a lot of Freudian, Freudian stuff in the he first wanted one. It to, he wanted it to be yeah. sexually terrifying. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's, well, that's why the little yeah. alien popping out looks like a... That's, that's my HR Giga. It's just yeah. a master of biomechanical dicks. Yeah. This <laughs> um, I was about six. I mean, mum and dad had taped her off the TV. So as long as there was no sex in there, I could watch whatever I wanted. And then... Um, yeah, I watched Alien, and I just thought it was incredible. It was just a nice, scary, tense movie. Mm-hmm. It, it it's wild, but in in the way that Fury Road is, and and few very few films do these days. It's, it's like Star Wars. It felt lived in. They were yeah. like gritty space truckers. <laughs> the ship was battered to bits. Yeah. It didn't feel like a nice shiny Star Trek movie. It was there, and that sort of won me over. Even at a young age, I was like, "This is incredible." Then, not long after that, I saw Aliens. Because it was on um, a Saturday night, they taped it and I watched it on a Sunday afternoon. And I think it was the director's cut, but I might be wrong. I'm not sure what year that was released. Anyway, I thought that was in- I thought that was even better than the first one. I was like, whoa, this is brilliant. Waited for Alien 3 to come out, watched it when it came out on, I think it was either Sky. You know, I watched it on Sky on a Saturday night and my auntie was babysitting me and she fell asleep on the couch. And I was like, Sky movies, <laughs> Alien 3, <laughs> didn't sleep that night. And then I had to wait for Resurrection. 97 that came 1997 again I had to watch it on the TV like a year later on Sky Box Office because I was only 12 but yeah I like I like all the Alien films I've been the pictures to see I've been the cinema to see everyone that I could now that I'm legal age I saw both Alien vs Predators and Prometheus a bit of a die hard the only one fan yeah. of the movies I've seen in the pictures was Alien and it was because Prometheus was coming out, and there was um, uh, an old like Art Deco uh, cinema. I forget where it is. It's in Liverpool because someone took us there, and it was a midnight showing. When was that? It was literally just before Prometheus came out. Was it in town? Oh, it was in town, yeah. Because it was a, like an old cinema, and it had yeah. that proper Art Deco. It survived World War Two. Where is cause it? Because it's got like a little plaque in there. I can't for the life of me think oh, of the name. Google it later. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's got like a little plaque in there and that. And they were doing this because they wanted to upgrade to digital uh, pro- projectors Alien, and stuff like that. It was just amazing just seeing that on the big screen in this old cinema, like after people are asleep because it's a midnight Sobering. showing. <laughs> and I'd been in the pub beforehand to keep myself awake. I missed the uh, director's cut cinema release, Halloween two thousand three. They brought Alien back out on the cinema. Oh, it was that's there. right. Yeah. Yeah. Ridley's director's cut, which interestingly was the first film where you saw someone web to the wall. Yeah, well, well it was the, the original That's concept, right. weren't it? Yeah. With the egg, uh, the alien life cycle. They wanted the t- was it the human one that the turned to the egg? Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Because like Bert already like yeah. formed into an egg, and Dallas is, yeah. you know, kill me, yeah, kill yeah. me. And Cameron just scrapped all that and was like, big queen bee, <laughs> which I mean, basically was the best I idea. Yeah, yeah, based on termites. Yeah, because if it hadn't done that, they would never have had a franchise. That was literally yeah. that one idea of the Alien Queen mm. spun off for everyone. Well, it's so. the original. They had the all the scrap stuff that was concept was there was going to be a big pyramid. It wasn't going to be a ship. Similar there was going to be a massive pyramid in there. There was going to be all murals on the wall of the alien life cycle, yeah. and there was going to be eggs in there and that. All the actual concept artwork for it is absolutely amazing. Ridley Scott did a lot of the storyboards himself, yeah. didn't he? Yeah, yeah. A lot of Mobius art design. Mobius, the, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's Mobius, me. Yeah. It's crazy. So when did you first see your alien films? Alien? Well, well, I've said plenty of times before that my mum and dad never used to let me watch certain things. So, so last week. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the way I watched this one was a bit strange, really. I remember being about eight or nine, I'm the nightmare. 
don't, I can't remember what it was about. I remember coming downstairs. So my mum or dad thought the best way to solve this problem of me having a nightmare was to sit me in front of Alien. Fight <laughs> <laughs> yeah. a nightmare with a nightmare. Yeah, so I came yeah. downstairs and they were just about ready to watch it, watch the film Alien. They give you cheese as well. <laughs> <laughs> and it was about to start on TV. They obviously didn't want to send me back to bed because of that nightmare, but they obviously also didn't want to miss Alien. So... You had to sit there and watch, and watch it. it. And I can remember, I don't know whether it was because I was younger, but I was actually more scared of the bit where the robot, Ian Holm. Yeah. I was more terrified of that than oh, the actual right. That alien. was the fit. I didn't see that coming at all. Yeah. No. When he, when he's there and he's talking and his head's like covered in white goo and it's detached from the body, but yeah. only attached by wires. Yeah. I found that more scary than the aliens then when I was younger. And then from then on, it scared me, but it was a joyful scare. I wanted to see the sequel when the sequel came out and... Stuff like that. And I've, I've always been a fan of them. Um, I even like the lesser ones, like yourself, like Resurrection, Alien Three. I think Alien Three is like a, it's an underrated gem for me. I think. I, I, I'm a massive, I'm a massive fan of David Fincher, um, and even though David Fincher doesn't necessarily like, I know I still love that film. He, he hates the film. Yeah, he's disowned uh, it, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I still absolutely love it. He's on still the him, Blu-ray it? box and the DVD box set, you get a theatrical cut and a director's cut. For every version except three, mm. you get a work print cut, which was the closest you're gonna get to his actual vision. Was that, that with the the end and the proper ending on it? With the cow and stuff at the beginning as well. Yeah, so basically, it changes it up. As in, you see the EVA pod crash, but Ripley's actually on the beach because you see one of the Prince Charles stands oh, that's right, walking yeah. across the beach, and you know he picks it up and brings it in. So it's a whole different scene that went yeah. in there. And then when they're bringing the ox in because it just fell and they're talking about it and he pulls up a face hugger at the end when the guy goes out the room and goes, what's this? It's not a normal face hugger. It's a queen face It's hugger. a black face hugger with like kind of webbing in between its fingers. It's massive. Yeah. And this was the concept of this was the queen face hugger so it could lay multiple eggs into its host. So obviously Ripley. The spoilers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it never really explains where the alien came from, does it? In the no, film? it's it's because there's like acid marks on. This is what gets her thinking, because she fired looking at the cryo tubes in the EVA. There's acid marks on the side of the thing, which I thought was very nicely done. Yeah, that, okay. so, yeah. Everyone except Fincher got a director's cut, and he still t- he want. He, I think I think he, he washed his hands of it, really, didn't he? Yeah. He's he still got a very bad taste for the movie, but it was all the production problems that yeah. went on and the reshoots that had to happen. Did he do that and then do nothing until seven? I think so. That's like four year gap between films. Because yeah. So it must have left a really bit of taste in his mouth because he just obviously took a step away first, from the film. It was his first film because he came yeah. away from doing that music for was, Pepsi and that. Music videos. Yeah, yeah, videos it, some Madonna yeah. videos. Yeah. And obviously if they'd have let him do what he wanted it probably would have been a much better film. Yeah. I do think the be- the, the cut is a lot better for the film just for the fact it gives it a lot more content than you had in the original with Golic actually seeing the alien as like a god yeah. You'd never see it in the original. You don't see the alien get captured. So that whole scene was kind of pointless where they're doing the fire. In the cut, it's not. They trap yeah, it. Yeah, and it's right. Garlic who thinks it's a god that releases it. And then it's out again. But at least it had more meaning because yeah. of that. Mm. I, I did like Alien 3. I, I don't think it's as bad as everyone says it is. I, I, don't think, think, I do it think it's either. underrated. I do. My view on the Alien films, and I'll probably go more into it in the second when we talk to him about each film but I think one and two are awesome films they're as close to perfection as you'll ever get with horror films Yeah. three and four for me or, or three in Resurrection if you will they'd be great standalone films if yeah. they were just films on their own Yeah. they'd be really really good but because of what's come before well, they, it's, it's the shoes to fill isn't it yeah. you can't it's, how, it's how I feel fit, about man. the um, Keanu Reeves Constantine and the Stallone Judge Dredd films yeah. If they were called something else, they would have been massive. Yeah. But yeah. because Judge Dredd was Judge Dredd, all the Dredd fans were like, this is crap, this isn't Dredd. It's a good film. Yeah. It's a cheesy action film. It's a good guilty film. pleasure. Yeah, and the same with Constantine. It's a good supernatural I, I horror film. I definitely agree with that. It's not a Constantine movie. And no. I think you're right. If Alien 3 would have been called... Um, Chase Under the Water. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a terrible name. If it would have been called like Levi- Prison Leviathan or Leviathan. Space Pirates. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't bend over in the showers. <laughs> or, you know what I mean? It, I can't. It, it, <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I, I, I think you're right. That's a good yeah. What what came before Shackle them films? We if we, they did, especially following a James Cameron masterpiece. Yeah. Yeah. Which and was arguably his first one to like I think and it's good as good as the Terminator films are, I still think Aliens is his best film by far. Yeah. I think Aliens give him the stones to do what he did with the Abyss and then T2 and then obviously become the world's biggest director. Yeah. So, leaving from that then, let's just have a small discussion about what we think about each film. So, what better, what better place to start but Alien. So, what's your thoughts on Alien, Sam? A masterpiece. It, it doesn't get anything better than that. I mean, watching it now in high definition, you can tell like the workmanship that's gone into them sets. It looks absolutely stunning, and the alien itself is absolutely terrifying. I mean, I'm you know thirty two, and when you see the bit with Dallas in the actual vents and the aliens coming that's towards them, that still puts hairs on the back of my neck up because it's the feeling of claustrophobia, and you feel his fear. If you know what I mean, of you, you're putting yourself into his position and it's like, you've got to get out of there, you need to get out of there now, you shouldn't have went in there. Yeah. Yeah. And then just as soon as he comes up and it's... It's <laughs> gone. It's like Jaws. Yeah. It's, it's the mm. same feeling you get from Jaws. It's not quite fear, it's anxiety. Yeah. It makes it's you feel tension tense as well, yeah. and you, you're, you're nervous of what's to come as opposed to, I know something's going to pop out. It's more like, is it? Is it not? Because yeah. it, it, it is like Jaws, you don't know you don't exactly know where it's going and you only get small glimpses. Yeah. And again, I do think when they brought them all out with the director's cuts, um, Alien did, it didn't really need anything, but it did benefit from some it of it. shorter as well. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I did like the bit where you see, you know, the, they're getting the alien signal and they can hear it on the comms because you didn't get that on the other bit. And uh, obviously where she goes down and sees them on the wall, that added a bit yeah. more to the characters of like that's what's happened to them. They didn't just disappear. They are still on the yeah. ship, and because they did vanish, like as if they were yeah. eaten. But obviously, that's yeah. not what happened. One of, probably one of the best bits is where the alien is actually in the chains, and on the cut you do see it hanging in the chains as Brett goes in there to get Jonesy the cat, and that's then it genius. comes down. It's just amazing to think that was done back then, mm-hmm. and it's yeah. Did you ever know what the original alien and the re- original ending to Alien was meant to be? I probably do, but I probably, not. Yeah. <laughs> not to you might as well tell us. Sigourney Weaver gets her head chopped off at the end. The alien goes over to the pilot seat of the plane of the Nostromo. Yeah, yeah, I've heard this. Yeah, speaks in Sigourney Weaver's voice and basically says, "I'm coming in to land on Earth," and um. then it was going to fade to black, like it was going to reveal that it could talk all along. Uh-huh. I'm so glad they didn't do that. Yeah. No, that sounds stupid. <laughs> to be fair though, if it was, if you, you would never see that coming, would you? No, that'd, no, that'd be no, one no. of them endings you talked about forever. Like, do you remember when the aliens started talking at the end? <laughs> Amazing lad. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Tim. Alien. Got aliens, then. Alien. <sighs> For me, it's just definitely up there. It's one of my top films. It's. I'm going to talk about the the sets and stuff now because they're so, like we said before, like they're so real, gritty lived in and you feel a part of the set you feel like you're sitting there sitting around the table eating with them just before the alien chest burst happens and you know you're not expecting anything to happen everything's back to normal it's the use of practical effects as well where it totally shows why practical and on-screen effects or on-set effects I should say are so much more realistic and better when it's done properly for the actors and for, for the sets themselves, because the stuff way everything feels to. and stuff to react to, exactly. But also the use of sound and the use of um, the sort of noir of, of everything. So it's like scenes where all you hear are like clicks in the background or a chain moving with, with dripping water. And the, the music's very minimal. You just get very little bits of notes here and there. It's almost like a hum, isn't it? Yeah, the music's it, it's like just... There. Well, you do, right. you get yeah. the hum of the ship all the way yeah. through, yeah. so it is, you know, a work. It, it's Every, not, it's everything's not, alive, yeah. the everything's ship's got a, a feel to it, exactly. the ship is a character. Everything, you're surrounded by all this nuance and sound, and it just encaptures you in the whole film, and you're just totally invested into it, and when actually things start to happen, and the alien strikes at things, you know, you really, really feel it. Uh, it, it it's just... 
perfect away it just engulfs you into their world and it's one of the flawless films that are that are out there but yeah I love all all the way the characters evolve throughout the film the way things happen the way you get the, the turn of the the droid guy and when he starts going weird as well he starts spinning around goes what, what's his name Bilbo Ian Holm well all the uh, the stuff where he's in the uh, the cockpit of the ship well it's not the cockpit it's like a observation yeah um, because they use like a reverse projector on it and stuff where he does that little run in that that was all him because mm. he thought he, he's a great actor, he thought yeah. this needs a bit of something he put that in there and it's like you yeah, think why, why, yeah. why are you doing that I love also the bit where she goes into the mother computer to type yeah. into the the, uh, the information and all you hear is the sort of almost Darth Vader breathing really he's kind of you're kind of engulfed in like a womb. It's like showing like how like a human's inside the womb or something like that. And, and it's mother. Yeah, it's mother, mother. yeah. It's, it's just so clever. Everything about it, there's an absolute the design, brilliant. as you're saying. Yeah. It's hugely influential on so many films since. I would argue that Paul um, W.S. Anderson, who makes the Resident Evil films, his entire career has been based on ripping off Ridley Scott and Aliens. So uh, Aliens, much. sorry. Because Event Horizon is Alien with Ghosts. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and um, he eventually did do Alien vs Predator. Yeah, and even some of the aspect of some of the Resident Evil films have got that whole clinical look of the Alien films. There's a scene where um, the use of sound is just uh, brilliant because there is none, and it's the bit where Ripley is um, is is on her own. I think she's got the cat in, in her clutches or something like that. She's trying to get to the uh, the escape pod. And aliens just round the corner, and the lights are flashing in her face, and the sound just drops for a whole second as she just sort of looks around the corner, and you just feel the whole tension going through you, and you're just waiting for something to happen. It's just masterful the way it's all mixed, all brilliantly done. It's just it is. It is a ten out of ten. Film. Yeah, you know, it's just brilliant. And there's there's two things that stick out the most for me for, from Alien, and it, it's it's in a film that's got so many iconic moments, and it's such mm. a masterpiece. The two things that stuck out for me the most as a kid was the ensemble cast mm. because I liked and disliked people in the cast. It wasn't yeah. like it was there was no there was nobody in that film who was a nobody. No. Every yeah. every character was there, everyone had a purpose. You liked and disliked some of them. Like um well, the, Parker yeah. and what's the other Harry Dean Stanton with the cat yeah the Brett. engineer guys Parker yeah. and Brett oh my god yeah. the I way they them. were like oh, constantly complaining about things and just the way they they're just, just the blue collar workers the, aren't exactly yeah. and they moan about not getting paid enough yeah, and yeah. It's Sig- Sigourney Weaver never came across as the star no. until the end yeah. like she was the hot, the final girl yeah. uh, of the horror movies um, yeah. also I, uh, the one thing that I really loved as a kid was them discovering the ship yeah, the derelict. I've never seen a spaceship look like that no. in, a, in a horror film, in a science fiction film. I mean, it looks obviously otherworldly, but it, yeah. it looks like nothing you've ever seen. Alien. It, it looks like it's yeah. so different from anything you've ever seen. Because if you said to someone else, draw it, like even Star Wars, yeah. they look like spaceships. They've got engines and propulsion devices. Yeah, yeah. That looks like a, a friggin' dinosaur bone. Yeah, it, it looks yeah. like. Everyone kept saying it was like a giant elephant or something. Do, do we know yeah. you see like the massive. Space control jockey. area. Everyone's going, what is that? Yeah. You don't know where it is. They don't even explain after. The, the thing about it, though, is... It I doesn't... always wanted to know sorry, what that was. Yeah. Was it an elephant? Was what the hell it was? Why yeah. was it so massive? Well, the, the, in the, well, before we got Prometheus, they did open up on it in the comics, and it did look like an elephant kind of creature. Thankfully, Prometheus has kind of wiped that aside, because yeah. I do think we got a bit better with that of what I it would imagine if they were giant, abstract, old gods. But it's that whole scene. I mean, again, going back to the set design, that was amazing. And the layer of yeah smoke. Yeah. Sorry, go on here. But the, the thing that gets me about it, though, is it doesn't just look like otherworldly, as you described it. It also, also looks like it's been there for a long, long time. Yeah. It looks ancient. So not only have you got this thing that looks out of a totally different world, it looks totally out of time as well. It looks out of a different film. Yeah. Like, they yeah. dropped it. it. It literally is. Like, they just drop into another movie, yeah. get infected, and go back to their own thing. Like, that, obviously, Prometheus is that movie that we got. Yeah. But the whole... Like, I was always like, well, where did that come from? What the hell is that? And when they go to Aliens, they never really... 
don't explain. They don't. They don't. This the ship's it, in it for literally dangling thread of a plot yeah. device, and yeah. they just sort of lick it and move on. Yeah. It's sort of like a MacGuffin, isn't it? It's like, but what it also does, it puts you into the mind of the characters in that yeah. film. Because yeah. what are them? What are them characters thinking? What was that I just witnessed there? Why? Yeah. Why, yeah. why is that there? It's All they brilliant. cared about was helping their friend yeah. Yeah. and getting away. I would have been like, no, lad, let's get back to that room. We need to find out what's in there. Yeah. So, but, I was just going to say, sorry, another, go another set thing that just popped into my head was the, the motifs of everything and that the fact that the helmet they wear when they go outside and stuff, even that's like shaped like an egg. Yeah, it is. Um, so it's just everything's thought of around that sort of structure of the alien. What's really funny is there's a film, I think it's from 1967, Called Planet of the Vampires, and it was it's why it's known that that's the film that Alien ripped off. Right. They basically took the the basic plot of this film and ran with it. Um, and Planet of the Vampires is a proper sixties like Austin Powersy looking film. Oh, okay, yeah. but their spacesuits are all like blue with yellow piping and glass domes. Mm. They put it in Prometheus. Mm. They put the yeah. they put the Planet of the yeah. Vampires spacesuits in Prometheus. I have to look that up. Yeah. Okay. It might not be called Planet of the Vampires. I'm pretty sure it is, but it's a cheesy, okay, <laughs> horror thing. And it's that's the thing is Ridley Scott has taken that crappy horror we've seen a million times before. A group of people go into a house, something happens to one of them, and they all get killed they... horribly one by one, and turns it from a horror cheese into a sci-fi masterpiece that we're sat here discussing forty years later. It's it's it's, it's a B movie idea. It's a B movie concept, but it's. It's a movie. Just expertly done. Yeah. yeah, it's just the way it's executed, let's say, yeah, yeah. is takes it above being Yeah, it breaks spaces. out of its that, being really movie genre. all over, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So, Aliens. Aliens. Um, 16 million budget it had. Aliens? Yeah. yeah. 16 million budget they yeah. did that. And they, they smashed it in the return. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I and think... Some, was it, it, this I time think, it's war? What's the tagline, yeah. was it? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing about aliens, isn't it? It's completely different from the first one. It's a different. Yeah, you've got your horror, and now you've got your action. your action. It's not scary. It's got it's got jumpy moments, but it's not scary. No, it's no. it's you it's know more, it's James Cameron. It's more he's tension driven, isn't it? Yeah. He's jumped off the back of Terminator straight into this. Yeah. And well, apparently he was waiting for Arnie to finish Conan Two while he, while he wrote the script for aliens. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it's it's an amazing film. It's uh, again, this was. <laughs> The first one I saw because I saw them in the wrong order. I saw Aliens, Alien Three, and then Alien. But um, again, this is my favorite film. It's just amazing. I, I love that all the characters. They had some little bit of army training beforehand. Um, they got to design their own yeah, stuff on the well. gear. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's it feels worn again. You do feel like it's a you know a unit that's yeah. been through stuff beforehand. Yeah. Um, and their banter between themselves yeah. is just, hey Vasquez, have you ever been mistaken for a man? No, have you? It's just, yeah. <laughs> you get the feeling they've known each other The way they years. shot the film, they purposely shot it so that the, the bit where they're all grouped together and they're all kind of doing like a lot of banter and stuff yeah. is near the end of the shoot time. Oh, so right. they all got to know each other a lot throughout the rest of the and shoot. Then, and then because they're all together and such compadres now, yeah. they kind of bounce off each other much better. Just that genius team the way dynamic. You yeah. really feel the yeah. love. No, yeah. no, no, it reminds me of now you mentioned Spielberg before and you mentioned George. This is like the Saving Private Ryan. Yeah. Saving Spielberg. <laughs> That's what it's like. Cause Saving, pri- Saving Private Newt. <laughs> 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 yeah. I'm not Matt Damon. Mostly. <laughs> well, I'm mostly not Matt Damon. <laughs> mostly. <laughs> mostly. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's just it's an awesome film. And Simon touched on it when he was talking about Alien. I don't think we can get away from the guy who was in the suit that played that alien. Yeah, in the first one. In, in the, the first, first one, he's like a ballet dancer from Nigeria yeah. or something. He was a very skinny, tall guy that they used. Apparently, he couldn't really lift the suit very much. Yeah. They but found him in the pub. He was just in the pub, and they were like, "You want to do this?" Big, massive, l- yeah. limber. Well, Cameron chose to, to use athletes, not, yeah, not so tall, but athletes in the next one, so he could have the aliens jumping around and crawling really fast. But the design, the design of the alien and uh, aliens in the se- in the sequel, is sort of what makes the film so. Don't want to say realistic, because it's not a realistic film, but the, you've almost the reason this so scary. I mean, I know you said the second one isn't scary, but the se- the aliens are, yes, they, are, scary, yeah, they, are. Sc- they are scary, is because 
there's hardly any animatronics as much as this is physical yeah it's it's, it's not even well, it's not even, it's, it's just costume yeah. I think I think the bit of publicity was used for the tails when the tails and the, and the queen. There's the tails yeah. and there's uh, hero shots for heads where they get blown away. Yeah. You know where they had like them going into the lift for close ups and the mouths coming out and stuff. But that was apart it. from that, it's basically just the guy in the suit. So it looks like it's yeah. there. You can reach into the film if I you really like, really want to and touch him. I didn't like the change to the alien's head, the, the dome. In the first film, there's a human skull with a yeah. translucent dome, and you can it's see a bit the more skull. You can, rigid, you can, isn't it? Yeah, it's a, it's a completely sheen with a skull, and it's scary looking. So I'm gonna go against that because I actually do like the change to the skulls and that. But you you prefer the ridges? Yeah, it's I like, prefer it because it's less it's, sexual. And I don't mind it. Cam- it's Cameron's in-se- thoughts in-se- about it. Oh yeah, I like them both. Yeah, Cameron's thoughts about it. They look a lot meaner. You know, they, they they look fantastic, and it's the bit where you know they're in the nest. And they're coming off the walls. Yeah, you that. didn't even know they were in That's the walls, brilliant. and they just unwind. It all makes sense that they look like that. So you know all this uh, secretion that That's they put brilliant. on the walls, they blend into it. Because it takes it away from being a mythical, a mystical. What the hell is this? And makes it animal. Yeah. And I, I don't know if I like. I mean, obviously, I, I love these films, but I don't know whether I like the the idea of deliberate placement of eggs by some other being. Or do I like the? They are just wild, terrifying creatures. I like the. I like the fact that they're wild, terrifying creatures. But I don't think anyone else who made the films, other than Cameron, liked that because it was AVPR goes back to it a bit. But everything else, they seem to be deliberately placed. I don't think Ridley Scott really liked that, did he? I might be making that. Might be lying about that. Uh, I don't know. Might be putting words in his mouth there. Sorry, Rid. <laughs> Rid. <laughs> Sorry, Rid is all pal. Yeah. <laughs> He's gonna have me on the phone later. <laughs> He's gonna... There's a band I used to listen to, and they had a song called Wriggly Scott. <laughs> this makes me laugh. So, who's your favourite of the uh, Colonial Marines? Oh, it's it's got to be Hudson. You know, I was going to say Hicks because it's it's close between them, but Hudson, he's he's got the one-liners yeah. and Game over, man. He's, much all of his he's got an evolution to his character yeah. in the sense of he's this ballsy character. You know, the squad gets wiped out. He becomes this coward yeah. and then redeems himself at the end yeah. by you know going all balls out action against the aliens in the yeah. stand that they have in the medical bit. Mm. What about you? you? Same kind of Hudson. Yeah. Just, I can't, I can't disagree with Sam. It's just his character is what what he turns into is what you hope you like is what you hope you'd be like in your yeah. situation. Before that is what you probably will be like in that situation. Tim, uh, the cat at the beginning. Ow! Aliens. Different cat. Different cat. Yeah. Right. Um, Smacking hell. <laughs> <laughs> They did an alien parody as well, yeah. the Vindaloo yeah. Cuddy Monster. Do you know what? Sigourney Weaver's character, Ripley, is... No, no, it was your favourite to the Colonial Marines. Oh, right, sorry. <laughs> well, she becomes a Marine. It's not funny if that was the question, we'd have all gone with Sigourney Weaver, I think. Yeah. yeah. Well, she got. She was the first one to get an award uh, for a alien action movie. So, oh. who's your favourite to the Colonial uh, Marines? <laughs> Stop dodging it. Stop dodging that bullet. Um, From the pulse rifle that you're not allowed to fire in here. Yeah. It's hard to, to say. I, I'd probably Ape say. Home. <laughs> I can't remember what her name He's was. Hey, Sarge! What was Ramirez, it? Ramirez, yeah. Vasquez. Vasquez, Vasquez. Uh, she w- I just I thought she was really cool, especially the bit where um, looking out and she's got the. the uh, oh, what are they called? The, the motion motion tracker. The trackers. The motion trackers. And they've just barricaded themselves in and then the aliens are on the move. They, yeah. they made a strong, another strong another female, strong character, female character, character. Yeah. Which was good. And, you know, again, she had a lot more to her than you originally think if you look at the film because, you know, she loses Drake at the beginning. Obviously, that I was like some Drake sort well. of yeah, love that, interest. That was, that was it as well. She, yeah. she had, obviously, like a good compadre with him. Yeah. Do I do that. think I it really, was a love interest. I think there was as yeah. well, yeah. The whole uh, like, the fact that they yeah. were both um, both the same sort of munitions type character. Yeah, both, both smart on us. Yeah, yeah. The they said alien. She thought they said illegal alien. <laughs> <laughs> she said that man. <laughs> you know, they get all the ammo taken off them because they're basically underneath a giant. You feel a camaraderie between them. So yeah, you, and mm. she just passes them. Yeah, like 
as yeah. it always passes on the clip. That's it. I mean, that kicks it all off in that it's nest, just, and yeah. it's just that noise. That, yeah. Yeah. It's just yeah. a sound effect. Let's noise. rock! Yeah, <laughs> I love Apone so yeah. much. Yeah. yeah, he's just the coolest man alive with his baseball cap and his cigar. It's oh, like, he's brilliant. Every, every other day in a call, <laughs> <laughs> every meal a feast. <laughs> I love yeah. him. It's just he feels real. I think he actually was yeah. a drill instructor. I as think well. so. No, he was. He used to yeah. be in Nam, Vietnam. Oh, so and the baby we choose a cigar yeah. as well and she yeah he's like yeah go ahead <laughs> I smoked cigars for a while when I was in my early 20s purely because of Wolverine and Apo <laughs> <laughs> and it's a true story I, uh, I great role models <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I really got into cigars and I was smoking them like all the time and uh, someone I used to work with found out that I liked cigars she went to Cuba and brought me back a, no way. a Cuban um, I had like big, I had like a book. Sorry, yes. yeah. Picture a Cuban woman. She brought me back a Cuban <laughs> anywhere, anytime. Okay? Um, brought me back this big Cuban cigar, and I sat on the couch with all the windows of the house locked and all the doors oh. shut. I just fogged myself in. <laughs> I, had, I had a six pack of root beer because I'd read on this cigar website, light it with a wooden match because yeah. the petrol changes the flavour. Hang on, isn't that like in Hellboy as well? <laughs> yeah, but I went on a cigar. Yeah. I went on a cigar website and it said there, uh, get yourself a fine scotch or a beverage of your choice mm. to enjoy with it. So I got root beer <laughs> and sat on the couch just watching TV, smoking this cigar. And Did then, you see the TV? Not really, no. <laughs> it's like the fog, John <laughs> Carpenter's <laughs> Wait there. pirates are going to come in and this take it. This gets even better. So I walk around the living room doing me a pony impressions and it must have took me over an hour to get this cigar down to like small size. Then I put it in my ashtray took my shirt off, got some hair gel, spiked my hair up, <laughs> and did Wolverine impressions in the middle. <laughs> and that all sounds cool, right? Until he tells you that it was loose women that was on the TV. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, oh, 25, 26. I'm looking in the mirror going, oh, it's another fine day in the car, boys. <laughs> Assholes and elbows, ladies. Yeah, I was just about to say yeah. That. yeah. The amount of one-liners in that film is it's just brilliant. amazing. It's hugely quotable. Yeah, yeah it's just, it is... Everything about that. I probably cl- quote it once a day. Is it quoted all the time when you play uh, the Alien game on the, the Super Nintendo? So I'm like, game over, man. I, <laughs> I say die. that every yeah. week without yeah. fail. Yeah. So what's the next one? Oh, before we move <laughs> I was on, I say, yeah. and we all drop to a little tiny yeah. lull. Right. Alien Three. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd say before we move on, I okay. mean, yeah, a lot of the stuff that I'd love to say in it, the miniatures were fantastic in yes. the film. Again, set designs. Uh, love the Sulaco, uh, Sulaco. Sorry, I'm gonna change the way you view aliens forever. By the way, go on. You were in it. Was that shame? <laughs> no. Um, have you ever seen 1989 Batman? Yeah. yeah. Ace Chemicals is the. Oh yes. Is the alien yes. Hive. I'm aware yeah. of that. Yeah. yeah. And apparently, when Burton rolled in to film, all the alien set was still there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the, it was an old uh, power plant, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. And they had to remove all the asbestos from it Why so not? they could do all the filming. Yeah. Yeah. So. And, and something we, we can't really move on from aliens without mentioning the final battle with the Sigourney and the. Oh, of course, yeah. Yeah. That big mech suit. I can't believe we didn't meet, uh, didn't even mention Bishop. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was just about to say Bishop because uh, Lance just, Hendrickson you know, says, yeah, yeah send Bishop out go on <laughs> <laughs> it's like throwing him I might the be bus. sympathetic but I'm not stupid <laughs> yeah. oh man I felt like crying at the end of that you know when he gets oh, ripped in half, half yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I remember filling up with tears the first time I saw it he's just, he just wins you over he's such a wonderful yeah. Yeah. character it's, it's when he comes to rescue it and he's going god damn you Bishop <laughs> and then the dropship comes in and you're like come on Bishop yeah. Yeah. The- when he's crawling yeah. through that pipe on his Oh, that's yeah. horrible I'd no way you'd get me in there no no yeah. <laughs> I feel like watching Aliens now we just press pause yeah. <laughs> but no I know what, know what I'm doing after we finish recording this podcast Aliens. yeah and yeah. I, I, I totally understand what you're saying Ian I mean that the Queen Alien effect was amazing yeah. James Cameron nailed it because mm. he didn't have to take anything out he had everything in shot mm. he knew where the actors were going to be that were going to be obviously controlling the Queen I think it was like six Four, 14 people. to 16 people. Yeah, controlling it because there's loads of arms going on. You've got the head, you've and got the mouth. looks better that. than what he did for Alien yeah. Resurrection. Alien vs. Predator. Yeah, and the power loader itself, that final battle, yeah. you know, it's just amazing. That's yeah. been ripped off in so many films. Oh, God. Yeah. Well, look at all the mech suits now. Everything is kind of a reference to that power James loader. James film himself, Avatar. Avatar. Yeah. I, always, I really feel like the company in Avatar is meant to be 
Yeah. Way than two times. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I it's really surprising. feel that. I feel like Avatar is a sideways sequel to Aliens. Well, he's. I'm not being funny. He's such an Aliens character. The guy who's in that suit anyway. He's right from that universe. He's, he's, like, he's like the Berk of that universe. Yeah. Oh, Berk. Yeah. Yeah, he gets, he gets his Yeah, I. Do you know what? He's, that's the first time I've ever cheated you know, anyone getting murdered in a film. Yeah, when Bear got got his comeuppance. Yeah, I, I thought. His, actually, I think his character was brilliant as he, well. He's, though. Oh, he, he's such a snidey character. Is that Paul Reiser? Paul Reiser is yeah. a fantastic, fantastic he's, comedy. He's mainly done in comedy though, isn't he? Yeah. You're known for that. But when you see him in this, and he's such a snidey, horrible, sleazy character, he just like, yeah. oh. It ruined Mad About You, didn't it? When, when I, <laughs> you saw that, you're like, no, Helen Hunt, he's bad. <laughs> no, don't trust him. Yeah. If he says he gives him his word, don't trust him. Yeah. I loved him in the, the Beverly Hills Cop films, probably. Like, yeah. Do you know what yeah. I love about him the most? I love his collar on his shirt. Yeah. On his suit, yeah. he's a sorry, stiff collar, yeah. 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 80, well, 80s futurism yeah. again another character that we haven't even touched upon no. who has another arc Gorman Gorman's great yeah. Gorman's yeah. a great character so you know he's this not so sure you know commander goes all cowardly in that yeah. and you know and then redeems himself at the last minute yeah. Yeah. with you know obviously him and Vasquez you always wear an asshole oh. grenade bang gone for yeah. such an action horror movie it's full of beautiful moments isn't it like, you, it's, it's the amount it's, of characters you've got yeah. and still providing the setup for each one of them is yeah. amazing well, like, well, like no, no one gets short shrift well that was Definitely. Most, like the first I, I'm actually before. no I'm talking I'm talking cat, rubbish isn't it? Is where's Bowski yeah. <laughs> where's Bowski where's Bowski where's Bowski I remember my dad was asking where's Bowski <laughs> he thought, thought there was a bloke called Bowski it's called listen. where's Bowski yeah it's on the screen yeah. you see it so when but like before you talk about Alien there's like no filler characters everybody's no. got an arc everybody's yeah. got a personality there's a reason for them all to be there they're not just there to make up the numbers no which there's is, no red shirts no. other, other yeah, than arguably where's Bowski a lot of horror yeah. movies are like let's face it they, they just have people there that are going to get killed straight away and you know as soon as they open their mouths you're all going to die even in like <laughs> something like that we were all like like Suicide Squad there was a character and we knew he was going to die straight away oh yeah <laughs> without doubt like, yeah he was like oh yeah he's going to die spoilers no to be fair though when Suicide Squad was coming out and they were like listing the cast they were like the Joker Harley yeah. Quinn Rick Flag, Deadshot Slipknot. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, slipped them in. Everyone was a decent name except uh, Slipknot. Yeah. So, um, Aliens or Alien 3? Alien 3 is, as we've already, we've already talked about old Alien 3 tonight, but it was, the, one of the interviews on the Blu-rays, uh, on the DVDs even, said they set out to make a release date and had to fill in. Yeah. Fill a film in according to that release date. They'd already committed and there's no pulling out the date. Like, you got to get it done. Well, there was a lot of confusion on it because the trailers they brought out looked like it was set on Earth. They were going to set it on Earth, yeah. weren't they? And then they panicked and changed it. Yeah. And we've, we've done an episode last year called uh, Un- Unfinished Films and Abandoned Visions. Yeah. And we talked That's about right. the Wooden Planet version of Alien 3. That's right, yeah. Which yeah. is an amazing documentary in itself. If you haven't seen it, it is worth just getting this Blu-ray saga just to watch just that. To watch, yeah, because Vincent Ward designed this whole thing Original, a lot of it was kept. The, the bald prisoners were originally monks. Yeah, and it was a, that's why the religious theme still there. They, were, they weren't convicts. The bare bones is kept of it. Yeah, and they just changed the skin, so it went from being a prison. Uh, it went to, be, to become a prison planet from being a monastery. Yeah, but it was a wooden planet with an artificially generated atmosphere. Yeah, and it like was, on aliens. It was so no no this was no like, no this was an actual was, was, was oh yeah planet. but this was a, a planet so it would water. have such so an artificial planet yeah oh, okay it had machinery planet. inside to keep it going oh. but other than that everything was very medieval technology and that was the idea was that these these uh, religious extremists had abandoned their right. way of life. their way of life and gone into space you know sort of like um, is it the luddites where they rejected technology and the yeah. Amish yeah. But they'd sort of use technology to reject technology. Yeah. And there was going to be like um, aliens chasing through the wheat, the wheat fields, which was later ripped off in the Lost World Jurassic Park. Yeah. yeah. There was going to be a big fire. There was going to be like uh, very, uh, as I said, mo- uh, medieval kind of monasteries. It was going to be going through the tunnels underneath it and stuff like that. couldn't have been like more that. different to the, to the other films. Like where every film changed genre, this was yeah. going to be like the crucible or something like yeah, old yeah. fashioned it's still 
different genre in you a sense. You still got that. Yeah. That whole the, got the, that sense. The gist is there, yeah. but clearly they didn't do what they intended to do. However, that being said, I enjoy Alien Three. Yeah. I enjoy the roster of British character actors that you have. Yeah. Some Pete Postlewaite, uh, one of the McGanns. Yeah. Pete Postlewaite for me, whatever he was in, it's just fantastic. Yeah, he's he's an amazing actor. Right? He's an amazing actor. Um, but Alien Three for me, it's it's only a short drop off from Alien Two. It's not a dramatic drop off. I really, really enjoy it. It's one I'll go want to watch again and again and again. Totally different, but the character doesn't change. No. And she said she was only going to do three if they killed her off. Was that right? Yeah. So she did. I think she was so involved in it as well. Yeah, and it was. A, it was obviously Alien Three was meant to be the cap of the trilogy. Yeah. How did you feel about the ending? Air killing herself. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, my original thoughts Alien Three when I first watched it when I was younger, I thought it was a load of crap. Really? But it's as I've got older. And my film knowledge has improved, and yeah. how I look at films, I appreciate it. You know what I mean? I really, I really like it. I'm, I'm one of these weird people where I see something in a film and I feel like I want to know more. So like when they're down yes. in the actual underground of the prison and that, I feel like I'd love to see what that looks like. You know, if it was all lit up and that, how would this prison look like if it was all again? Though that's 100%. a testament to what me and Tim were saying yeah. about world building and mm. and the lived in vibe. Because there's guarantee you've watched sci-fi horror films and that thought's never yeah. entered your mind. No. But what's there's, a, there's the, loads that have just the dropped. Planet off. is it Fury uh, One Six One? Yeah. That you you get what it is. Well, it's only two weeks from Aliens Two. Yeah. That's it. There's is the that Sulaco all it is? has only gone like two weeks from Aliens Two. Jesus. Got to the air. I mean, you've got the big thing of how the eggs on the ship. I mean, you can go into so many different forums of people going on and saying like the Queen brought an egg with her or something like just that. Just quickly popped one out. Yeah, but you know, I I always think there's one in the landing gear even though you see it just in like, it's yeah. on the corner of a locker, but it works to get the film moving. I think all the beginning section you with the EVA look. is absolutely fantastic. Yeah. The actual map painting of where it goes down looks phenomenal. They got that bang on. So it's... slightly off topic. I know this is not really to do with anything aliens. You just said there about people arguing about how the egg got on the thing, right? Yeah. Massive, massive, massive plot hole for me in another film, Jurassic Park: The Lost World, right? Yeah. When that boat crashes in San Diego, what? You tell me what? What? Where? Where the T Rex is? It's in the cargo hold. It's in the cargo hold. Oh yeah. yeah. So why are they dead? Why are they all dead? Yeah, yeah. It, it is a big plot hole. In right. It. My yeah. idea, right, is that raptors were on there, and oh, they, they, let, they let the T Rex out to eat the raptors. Isn't that a fan film in the, the holes for the director? You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Just because that guy he found a hand yeah. on the thing pressing it down. Yeah. Who ate him if the dinosaurs in the thing? Yeah. Makes yeah. No, no sense. I I agree with Jeff. Definitely. Yeah, it's, it's one of them things for me. And the other thing as well, Alien Three, Alien is that. Is that it, it's gone back from the action from the second one, it's gone back to being an atmospheric horror that we got in the Alien film. Yeah, no weapons. Now, in, in this I film, like yeah. one of the things that kind of does notch it down a few notches from the others, I think because, I'm going to kind of go into the negative a little bit, but then I'll bring it back up again. Um, Are you giving it a job appraisal? <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Yeah. <laughs> giving it <an> appraisal. <laughs> Um, your next steps to appra- go appra- away. Appraisals, <laughs> appraisals are really supposed to be all positive. That's why they're called appraisals. Ah. That's my management course. <laughs> <there for you. laughs> I, I need to get in touch with work then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah th- this one does have the red shirts in it for me. This because there's a lot of people in this in the prisons. There's quite a few people, so there's a few red shirts there. You don't really get to know that much, even though it's not a massive deal really because works for the film. Another thing is that Newt. Yeah is killed yeah. and all the struggle she went through in the last film for nothing because yeah. <laughs> New gets killed straight away um, you can say that about all of these films like it literally so, I know as soon and as she wakes life, up I suppose the life happens yeah. you know it, oh, it's no. one of those things but it's just a, it kind of dead you know it gives a bit of a nullness to, to a whole reaction to like oh yeah she got to the end and Newt's still alive she gave, she, she kept the promise mm. and I, then, I think it was it kind of lost that yeah, I think it was just to push it. I mean, 
I couldn't see the film working in the same environment if she was alive. Could you? Could you see? Well, that's you the thing. They, they had planet? to do something, no. and I think Should it probably was the only thing they could do okay. was kill her. Because one, if they recast her, she would have been like several years older anyway, and it's supposed to be like two later. weeks after. Yeah, she would have been too old to do it. You would have had to recast a new, another girl, mm. and the, the um, probably would have just been easier to kill her. It was easier for her not to be there. Yeah, because I think. What happens here, if you put a young girl of her age on a planet like that with... Rapists and men. You're, you're creating a problem for yourself. And then no, then the alien isn't a monster anymore. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. that as well. Yeah. And the alien is less the scary than the, 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 the first the film yeah. knew, was kind of there to replace her daughter. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's a scene that's cut, or if you watch the director's version, then there's a scene where she finds out that her daughter died at the age of 67. Yeah, that's Which horrible. Actually, yeah. where she yeah. sat in yeah. just a little um, holodeck type yeah. of thing, yeah. isn't she on the bench? Yeah, she just turns off the screen. It's like this is rubbish. <laughs> turns it off. See her face. It's brilliant. Amanda Ripley. Yeah. Um. Anyway, I'm going a bit off tangent there. That was one of my little gripes, but it does have it. You know, we can talk about the theories behind it, and it kind of makes sense. But it just kind of felt a bit of a shame. And then you've got the cannon for the characters like I said the red shirts you're right you're right there as well the only thing as well with Alien 3 is that there is a load of generic bald white dudes all that in the got, same clothes just got killed yeah. yeah and they're not really that distinguishable from each other yeah mm. um, but to be fair they're all great actors they just yeah there's some really great actors in that film um, Charles some Dance them, is good some of them die too quickly I think yeah. Is it what was his name the uh, big Yorkshire guy Brian um, Ian What's the guy? What's his surname? I can't remember. Brian. And he did the technically adverts. I can't think of the top of my head. Like, and he talks like this. There yeah. is no alien. Oh, I know. Yeah. He, look, he looks like George the Animal Steel, the rest yes, of them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, he had that big speech where you're like, stop this nonsense. Right. Straight into yeah, the yeah. vent and then yeah. just blood and the bouncy ball that he had. Yeah. Or the stress ball. Oh, yeah. Just drop That's down. Really cool. And his little second in command, pure panicking. Yeah, uh, yeah. What, what is it, 84 or yeah. something? He is the uh, guy in Wings World 2. I had to get a thousand brown M&M's or Ozzy would oh. go on stage. Yeah. And he's also one of the pilots of the yeah. ships from uh, Naboo in yeah, episode one. Yeah, about the ending yeah. story. Yeah. 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 Anyway, the ending where Ripley sacrifices herself was David Finch's last straw because the studio insisted that an alien pops out of the stomach and... He didn't want that to happen because it kind of it negates her sacrificing herself if the alien survives. Did they want it to come out and get away, or just you just just wanted to see it? Yeah. Well, you don't really know if the alien gets away. I think she grabs it. She yeah, she holds it down when, to, yeah. when she goes into the big uh, lava pit. Lava pit, but uh, very similar to Terminator Two. Yeah, mm. to me, except the effects were worse on terrible. Alien Three yeah. for that. But to be fair, they, they had no time to do it, did they? To be yeah. honest with you, I think that was more. I love watching I, the sorry, not, producers not, admit that they hated it. Yeah, I love the fact that I think what the, what I think they were doing there is I think David Fincher was saying you're sort of calling your own audience stupid by doing that because we know why she's trying to kill herself. We don't need to yeah, see the alien coming out. Yeah, but I think it's sort of I, it, it, I it disagree makes, with it. I know he's the artist, but I disagree with that. I like that you saw it because it's so, it sort of gave it a face off the final. In, I, yeah. I'm, I'm get, not gonna let you. I'm win. getting one over on you. Yeah. 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 Anyway, that was it. that was all I wanted to say about the, the sort of slightly negative terms, really. But other than that, the whole setup, like you say, the sets are fantastic again. And then I think Sigourney Weaver just totally every film really she knocks it out of the park. She's just such an amazing actress, mm. and she's surrounded by some other good actors as well in in the film. And again, this has gone back to a tension-driven sort of horror-like pick one off time at a time. Survival horror. Survival yeah. horror. Uh, so not, the fact that there's no weapons again is really clever. It seems, it seems more to I me, mean, don't get me wrong, like I said, I said, go back to the uh, atmospheric horror from the first film. But I seem, it seems more of, of a more of an adventure feel, this one, to me. Yeah. I, I, I know what you're saying. It, it was more. I don't know. I feel like there's no there's no corporate issue in this one until the very end. Yeah, there was no like 
big corporate thing to try and say, oh, we want to keep them, take them back, study and use them for warfare or something like well, that. Well, it wasn't until, like, a bit later on, and she's like, the guy that's in charge, and he's like, this is the first level yeah. high communication we've had off the company, because it is a prison facility run mm. by Wayland yutani Yeah. So, yeah. you know, you have that, and then you have where she's got the second in command contacting him, and she has to take over because he can't even type, he can't spell not. <laughs> yeah. So she has to take over, and then they're like, no, just secure Ripley. You know, make sure she's secure. So the, it's still an objective for them. And then you have Bishop 2, that turns up at the end. Yeah. So leading us on to Alien Resurrection. Simon's favourite. Mm. Your favourite? No. Oh. <laughs> it was so, right, You know what, right? <laughs> I was so hyped up for this film uh, when it was coming out because it was one that was coming out in my time. Yeah. Uh, as well as Alien 3, I wasn't aware of it at that point, though. But Alien Resurrection was coming out. I remember seeing it in the uh, the Daily Mirror. It had like a bit of saying, oh, mm. Aliens is coming back and that. And I was like, yeah, yeah, really up for it. It just never, it never got me. I, I don't like the look of the film. Um, I don't like the all the brownie colours the news on the aliens and that it, it doesn't work for me. Um, it was a lot more lit, wasn't it? As well, this yeah. this film, you could see too much of everything. Yeah, uh, some of the stuff just didn't look good. Um, I didn't like where they were like where she's flying the ship and she's like this ship's older than me. Why would you be using a ship that's like two hundred years plus older than you? Because it's that <laughs> Yeah. Um, I didn't like the rip of father instead of mother on the Eureka. It, it, there's a lot I don't like. There is stuff in this film I do like. I do love the underwater scene with the That's aliens. Brilliant. That was was that basically got to the core of it. Where in Aliens Two, they said they adapt, they adapt to their environments. They can yeah. be out in space, anything. You can't really kill them by changing the environment. That, yeah, and it just shows you in the water there. They look fantastic, fluidly Same swimming. With Godzilla, based that on was the first time they used CGI. Yeah, in the Alien films. Yeah, Alien. no, they didn't use it for Alien Three, but it weren't that great. No, it was a well, com- composite. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah, yeah. 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 there's proper CGI aliens. And, yeah. And, but it, it looked great in the water. Um, I like Ron Perlman's character in yeah. there. Didn't like Winona Ryder's character because if you look back at it, she's hating on it. And then it's like, oh, you're an android dog. Yeah. And then she still hates on it. And it's like, yeah, yeah. This is hypocritical, here. Yeah. For me, Alien Resurrection shines more as a Joss Whedon action film than it does as an entry into the Alien franchise. That said, I like the way it keeps with continuity. From the other films, because that that is what would happen. They would try and clone her because that company wants these aliens. Yeah, Ripley was just happens to be a byproduct, I suppose. Yeah, I love the room of the failed experiment clone Ripley. That I, first, yeah, that's, that's I horrible. Love, I that. love that. It's it's that's the emotional gauge there of yeah, her, yeah. um, because she never. It's never our Ripley in no, a sense, if you know what I mean. All. It's she's what we've got. It's like a super Ripley in it, and it's then that you feel like she's made that connection with the old Ripley. If you know what I mean, she's she's physically seeing this, and it's like she's got that hatred again for the aliens, and it's like, mm. what have you done? Yeah. Even though that kind of doesn't come back, it that scene's so powerful. Even when I was like twelve, when I watched it, I loved the fact that they used a weird visionary French director. They could have had anyone they wanted, and they chose Jean Pierre Genet, who made a weird, weird film, and it was Kafka esque with the metamorphosis, where she was like bursting out of that like whatever cocoon you know whatever she's wrapped in that bag where she's lying on the floor she's putting yeah. her nails through it but why did that scene need to be in there it didn't and like the whole thing where she falls into the big mass of aliens and sort of like oh yeah Jean-Pierre Genet for me he's, he was experimental he was his films all had a certain look he was more like a Picasso than a Da Vinci let's say it's not quite steampunk no nope. but it's not quite classical he's got his own Aesthetic. Everything looks green and brown, and if you looked at what's delicatessen and I'm lead, I the think... city of lost children. Have you ever yeah, seen that? Yeah. Again with Ron Perlman. Yeah. I like how Ron Perlman always turns up in these weird <laughs> experimental foreign films like Chronos for Guillermo del Toro. I did. Uh, I did uh, like the uh, the scene near the beginning where the uh, the aliens escape from the capsules. That's right. And they pick on the weakest alien to use its blood to get through the metal and stuff. Yeah, I suppose it's showing the intelligence that yeah. 
you know, we need to get out of here, we're just going to sacrifice you. What yeah. do you think of Brad Dourif's mad scientist character? It's a bit freaky, isn't it? Where he's like, he's, he's simulating it and that. Uh, yeah, you're a beautiful butterfly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it is, it's more like... Um, this is like it this doesn't It doesn't fit in for me. That's my problem. It's like it Brad Frankenstein. I find... Too different, maybe? Look, he's, he's a French director, so by saying this, is probably a bit stupid to say so, but it's like the Euro, it's like a European version of an alien film. It is. It really is. And that's, uh, that's yeah, part I of my, love, mean, my right? love towards it. Yeah. It's got the foreign sensibility, and it is, for a big budget, A-list Hollywood action film, it is different. And you've got jo- Joss Whedon doing his typical team movie. <laughs> uh, he, he's made a skeleton, and it's a Joss Whedon team movie along the lines of Avengers or Serenity, or Toy Story, any of his films, about a, a, they all have a group of people overcoming the odds. Yeah. Like t- Toy Story and the Avengers, same dude wrote it, not that different. Yeah. Um, and then over that skeleton, you drape this wonderfully absurd French skin of, of obscure cinema. I, for me, I don't think it's the best entry in the franchise, but it, it, its weirdness makes it if, up there. If, if that film had been spoken in French and had subtitles... You'd say it was a masterpiece. And yeah. it wasn't part of the Alien franchise, I wouldn't say that was a classic yeah. Jean-Pierre Junet science fiction film. Yeah. And we'd all be going mad about it. I say the same about the last Resident Evil movie. If it was called something else and it was in Japanese subtitles, that would be the best film anyone had ever seen. But the problem is, is that we have an idea of what an Alien film should be. And that's not it. Because and the that's not films, it. yeah. yeah. Because these aren't good films. It's just I'll I'll be the first one to admit. Is it a good film? Yeah. Is it an is it natural? An is it a not natural really. succession to an alien film? No. No. Really. It's just it's just it's just canon, isn't it? Yeah. So it's canon. But in around ninety seven when it came out, we had about three or four boss spacey science fiction action films come out with Starship Troopers, mm. Event Horizon, and where Alien Resurrection all in the same few months. So a year, about six months we had all three of them didn't we yeah, very so close, yeah. they're all good films they're all of the same but Starship Troopers felt more like the alien film we should have got I put Starship Troopers over that any day yeah. that's what I'm saying yeah. Starship Troopers and Alien Resurrection came out at a similar time you go for a Paul Verhoeven satirical shoot em up they should have gone Paul Verhoeven's a director <laughs> exactly yeah. to be fair he's an experimental European yeah. director <laughs> that's what it just sounds, yeah. 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 maybe they picked the wrong one and I'm going to say something really, really controversial right now. I think Sigourney Weaver's performance in that film may not be the best film, but I think that's her best performance as the Alien film. Because she's not Ripley Quickly. anymore. She's yeah. Ripley yeah, she's 8. Not, she worked out to do that role as well. She really got and herself ripped And thing up. with the basketball, where she, oh, yeah. she actually did that. Yeah. And they, the that's they were, just nuts. They were pissed <laughs> off because the camera angle was too tight and it disappears off the screen. And they were annoyed that people would think they've done an insert. Oh. But it was real. Apparently they were all real. That's why everyone's dead shocked when it flies in. I just think I just think she's brilliant in that film. She she shows every single emotion. Yeah. That that yeah. Cl- I don't want to say friendly because she's, she's, she's really cl- she's that she's angry, she sees him sad when she walks in that room. She's Full range of dwarfs, she's all of them. <laughs> she's all of them. No, she's amazing, isn't it? And you know what? Now I want to watch Alien Resurrection. Yeah. It's a good film. <laughs> Simon. <laughs> Sorry, Tim. Come on. Now, I was just going to say, the film itself may have been great, but when it comes to, like, um, the human-type looking alien at the end, sort of baby the alien... Oh, the rice pudding monster. <laughs> Is that where it all goes a bit Persian? <laughs> <laughs> well, for me. Well, for everyone. I, I, can, I, 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 you, you, you look at it and it's basically a monster that's got rice pudding poured all over it and it's got a little wiggly nose. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't like it. It's his the little, little nose, it looks like someone's just yeah. got like one of those um, pipe cleaners and blow it. Pa- painted it brown and just sort of hold it at the end. It's yeah. going, we go, we. I mean, <laughs> at what point is that? An evolution of the alien to be more lethal. It's this little fat, I don't think, pot-bellied I don't, I don't rice don't pudding it's monster. Not, it's, it's, it's what they wanted to create. Is they wanted to create an alien that was well, they, a they xenomorph, want a super soldier, a human. Yeah, a, that's what they, they want. Human, super soldier, want and that was just the freak that came out. That, that was just the freak. That, it wasn't meant to be. And they, that that was they wanted to create an alien that we had sympathy for. Yeah, it was almost human in the face. Yeah. yeah. That, so you had Sigourney Weaver as her character was 
the human alien. Yeah. And then you had the alien human. The alien human. Genius, yeah. Uh, so, and the other thing is as well, is she going to be ever gets upset? You have to cut the gets upset when this and when this whatever there is goes out that tiny hole, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know what? That's a brilliant effect, by yeah. the way. Yeah. They literally they had a string through the whole thing and pulled, pulled it through. It. So that's what the effect was of really... it getting dragged right yeah, through. So if you're going to feel if you're gonna feel what you're gonna be this evening, you've got to feel sorry. Or you've got to feel emotion towards that alien. How are you going to feel emotion towards that alien if it's a super xenomorph? That's true. Yeah, I had no emotion. I was made up. That's getting blasted, <laughs> blasted out the hole like a hangover shite. <laughs> <laughs> All I can say is, is if you're ever with the same room as Sigourney Weaver, just make sure there's not an airlock by it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she yeah. doesn't like airlocks. You know? yeah. um, so as much as we as we say, it doesn't feel like a natural successor to the films. Um, some of my favourite moments from the franchise are in Alien Resurrection. I love the uh, gun arms, like the taxi the taxi driver thing. Yeah. yeah. I love that. I love the whole cast. Is it the Betty, the ship? Yeah. yeah. I yeah. love the whole ragtag bunch of misfits. I love the guy from the colony. Michael Wincott. Oh, he's great, yeah. yeah. He's really good. Yeah, there are some good characters. Yeah. There, actually, yeah. Ron Perlman, uh, the little guy in the wheelchair. Mm. Who's wheelchair Getting carried up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, genius. When he was in Delicatessen. Yes, he was, yeah. yeah. It's just, I, I, there's little bits that I love. <clears throat> and it's just a shame that the final film was not what we wanted. However, I was about to ask Simon before before we got way off track. The alternative ending of the director's cut. Did you like it? Uh, refresh my memory. They land on Earth. And it's oh, like yeah. a wasteland. It, I thought it was. It felt like it didn't mean anything. It was all for nothing. Yeah. If you know what I mean, Earth <laughs> was meant to be that jewel in the sky that we never wanted aliens to get on. Because if you follow the actual graphic novels, they do. Yeah. And Earth becomes an alien hive mm. to these, and we lose Earth. Mm. So humans are basically stranded to the colonies. Mm. And there's a, the, the fancy, if you can track it down, there's fantastic gra- graphic novels. The Dark Horse ones. Of the Dark Horse ones of Alien War. They've been bringing out some stuff recently, which the artwork and it's been superb. And they've tied Prometheus, Predators, oh, yeah, yeah. and Aliens together. But, um,. I, d- I didn't like the ending because I was like, "What what was it for then? If it was a mm. if it was a shit hole, <laughs> yeah, who cares?" No, no, yeah, right. yeah. 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 Well, doesn't Ron Perlman actually say that? Yeah, yeah, he, yeah does, he does. He does. Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry. Yeah, yeah. 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 Quote in the crap film. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> you love it, really. <laughs> Ron Ron Perlman makes everything better, doesn't he? I, yeah, I do, do love Ron well, Perlman. He said today, um, they're not going to do Hellboy three, you know. Oh. He said he'd never talk about it anymore. I was like, don't, oh. don't lie to me. If man. that cash came forward, they'd be like, uh, yeah, yeah, I'll do that. Bring <laughs> so, out the red paint. Alien vs. Predator and Alien vs. Predator. I was Predator just about Predator. to say, oh, yeah, what? we've been talking for over an hour. I think we've talked about all the best alien films now. Let's just briefly move on. <laughs> <laughs> what we were, what you stopped us? Yeah. Um, I'll cut that out. Alien vs. Predator, Alien vs. Predator Requiem. I like them both. They're not my favourite films, but I like them both. I've not seen Alien vs. Predator Requiem. Oh, I, I, would, I, suggest, gaudy, like. I would definitely suggest you see it because there's lots of really good elements in it. Yeah. And they do try... I've seen the, the making of them stuff. Yeah. and they, they, you know, they really try and put their heart into it. I enjoyed the first one. The two guys who made it were yeah, really, they, it's really good It's not terrible. Alien vs. Just... Predator is better than Predators. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Like about Predators. That. Predators isn't too bad. Actually. Cottonmouth is in Predators. Yeah. But the Requiem, it's clever the way they sort of uh, hint at things, especially at the end. I yeah. won't, won't spoil it for you. But the. You've seen the first the fight of Predator as well. Yeah. The fight between the hybrid a- alien predator alien and the predator is. A lot of people complain it's just too dark and the camera. It's like, it like the Batman Begins fights. You just can't really see what's going on. That a lot of people complained about that. I I enjoyed it. It it felt a lot more human than I expected. Um, it they brought the alien ridges back from the second film, which a lot of people liked. The pred alien itself was cool. They instantly, it could instantly. Uh, impre- it had, it had, a, it had like a, yeah. a predator mouth, but it could instantly impregnate people. Yeah. Um, it like deposits eggs in them. It's sort of like a queen, isn't it? But not quite. The best thing it's about like it is hybrid, isn't it? the main. Predator is based on Winston Wolf from Pulp Fiction. He's the clean-up Predator, isn't he? You see him on the Predator planet. I think I think he's actually called the Wolf Predator. You see him on the Predator planet and he gets like the distress call of what's going on yeah. on Earth. And he flies in. To in just, ten minutes. To like, wipe out this town to like do the clean-up crew. 
<laughs> it's, it's rad like it's a good idea there are some really solid stuff in it yeah actually, and there's, there's some horrific scenes like yeah. of this uh, pred alien going to a maternity ward to impregnate a whole load of pregnant women and infest them with eggs I'll be quick um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't really like the films uh, I think the first one does a lot more for me than the second one does. I do like the the, the pyramid under the ice and that the, the yeah the kind of uh, tie in with Way Wayland before it was Wayland mm. Utah. I like that. Well. There was a lot of elements from the graphic novel in there, especially with the girl getting the alien head and yeah, I enjoyed that. I that was good. That is all from the graphic novel, apart from the fact that. It's not on Earth. It's on a different planet. It's a colony. Yeah. And the predators were doing the same thing, hunting. But there's a few alien fights in there that I do like, even though it's a bit corny, them throwing them through rocks and stuff like that. I do it's like... Like swinging it round. How much yeah. did that remind you of Batman vs Superman, by the way? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's when true, he was yeah. swinging him around, that's all I could think of, alien versus predator. I do, I do like like the alien that had the net on and its acid burn through. Yeah, that was it, It's kind of a unique one, looking one and that. You do see it a lot now. A lot of people have got like little fungos and stuff of it. But uh, Requiem, I didn't like at all. And I was all set to like it because yeah. I knew the guys were, you know, the, the directors were all about special effects and they, they, they knew, they were like, we're doing this for the fans. It just felt too much of a rip on it them. Was, it was, you could tell they were trying to do a fandom too. Yeah, there was it, so it much feel like fan fiction. in it. Yeah. it they like did, there was too much and... They, they try to do too much of a rip on uh, aliens with you know that that mum coming home from the army the daughter not recognising her you know mm. spoiling stuff there for you <laughs> 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 um, he wanted to see it he'd seen it 10 years ago when yeah, it came out yeah it? It, it just didn't it didn't work for do me do you know the uh, the predator noise that uh, I can't do it now <laughs> that, like, that sound effect yeah. the kind of the keckly sound they, they couldn't try they couldn't get it for that film they, they were trying to track it down like the sound effect for it but they couldn't find it and they found out that a guy in their ca- uh, crew could do it perfectly so they just used him to do it he does it in the, if you watch the uh, the making of on the DVD yeah. or the Blu-ray you, you see him doing it it's, right. it's really cool they do it. I, I thought that was the best sound effect they'd used of it as well funny story about uh, Alien vs Predator I went to go to a Halloween party years ago we sacked it off to go and watch Alien vs Predator the first one and uh, we're in the cinema, fully sold out, Saturday night, big, big, you know, big screen and everything, and uh, the old Odeon, mm-hmm. Liverpool, huge. And it, the, the, film, the, the crowd were quite, like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not re- not re- not enjoying the film. It was like a bit receptive. Yeah, there was, no, there was, was a bad reception. Like, yeah. And towards the end, when her and the main predator... I like you know teaming up to go back and f- like she, she's becoming a predator isn't she that, yeah. that's basically the gist yeah. and they look at each other lovingly some lad stood up and went oh just necker <laughs> <laughs> and it just killed it for me but when I set up when I set up back into it that scene of her and the predator running towards the camera lit up from behind like Batman and Robin <laughs> yeah. just <laughs> that's when it falls apart for me. <laughs> yeah. I, I actually do like the aliens when they're crawling all over the queen. She calls them, and it's mm. like bringing the soldiers back to break the it's shackles got off. The single coolest scene. From that the was year. the original queen repainted yes. from um, yes, it was. Resurrection because oh, yes. they painted it brown and then repainted it how it should be. The mm. single coolest film moment in any of the alien films for me. Maybe actually, maybe coolest is the wrong word, but as a fan reading the comics and stuff, as I was saying, that shot of the predators stood on top of a pyramid with thousands of swarming aliens. Oh, that's mm. brilliant. That is bloody good. Like the rest of the film doesn't live up to that one shot. That's your trailer shot right there. You're thinking, yeah. "Whoa, that's the end of that film." No, it's just a flashback. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it does explain like them killing themselves. It's not like a petty thing. It's to control the, you They're know, like samurai. Yeah, it is, it's cool. So it is quite cool. So, Alien versus Predator, set in the snow, people finding pyramids all over the place, linking towards. Was well, director's cut of that as well? I think I've got that on the with, DVD. Uh, where at the beginning, the beginning, it's only the beginning that changed the thing, where when you see the whaling station, which yeah. I like because it's like again. I'm a bit nuts with this kind of stuff. I like abandoned places and yeah. stuff like that. I like the thing. Yeah. And it's it's abandoned and you see the actual 
people getting killed mm. by the original aliens before they come there. Did you like the fact that Prometheus was very similar to Alien vs. Predator in the Chariots of the Gods pyramids? Yes. Yes. It linked in. So, if we're going to go and talk about Prometheus, we're going to... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've, we've right. landed on Prometheus now, yeah. let's go carry on. It's an alien yeah. film. Yeah. yeah, so... Of course it is. I, I, I was so hyped for this film. I've said this a few times now. I was so hyped for this film. Um, I think what got me more hyped is they were, when they were doing the trailers, they were using the alien uh, monotone... Uh, boop, boop, do you know what and I mean? And the, the font... Where yeah. spelt out. Yeah. And Ridders, Ridders was back in the yeah. character's chair. Oh, Rid. Rid, uh, yeah, Ridley yeah. Scott. We, we got him on the blower and was like, Ridder, you know, do you want to come and do this film No one's for necking us? no predators in this film. <laughs> um, <I> don't. <laughs> uh, I, visually, this film is absolutely gorgeous. I remember yes. going to see this in 3D IMAX and you just felt the depth. The, yeah. the, that oh, whole the bit at the brilliant. beginning was fantastic. Yeah. Um, I do really like Prometheus. I know there's a lot of people out there that don't like it. I am one of the few that really do. I I, I like it. I love the design of it. Yeah. Um, I love David. Yes. They, the the Michael the viral Fassbender. marketing for David. They re- they made David eight adverts in the style yeah. of like an iPod advert yeah. and released them to YouTube. Yeah. They were brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Michael Fassbender just nailed that. Shoot. But what is there not to like about Prometheus? Let's be honest, you've got an amazingly shot film by Ridley Scott. And then it turns into a slasher movie. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. And you've got you've got a smart price, um, Tom Hardy in there as well. Yeah, Logan Lemon. No, Lo- Logan, whatever his name is, Tom fake Tom Hardy. Just <laughs> <laughs> look, like, like he's been picked out of a yeah. Tom Hardy lookalike. He does, I do agree with <laughs> that. I've actually read the original script for Prometheus. Um, Better or worse? Different. Different. It's um. There's a film coming out at Christmas called Passengers. Have you seen it? No. With uh, Chris Pratt and Jennifer Lawrence. Oh, yeah. This guy John Spates wrote that about ten years ago, and it went onto the blacklist of the best. Do you know every year they have a blacklist? I've heard the blacklist the of best its unproduced it, screenplays. Yeah, they give them out now and again when they want a big blockbuster. So this has been sat on the blacklist for years, and he got two films on the back of Passengers. One was The Darkest Hour, with uh, the Russian. Um, Electric Aliens I don't know if you've seen that oh I didn't enjoy it's it it's not great it no. was changed a lot from his script and he got Alien Engineers and he was pitching and he pitched this Alien movie and Prometheus was originally called the Engin- Engin- Alien Engineers and they used John Spates' script and Ridley Scott got this guy called Damon Lindelof who wrote Lost to come in and basically just mess it up so they changed every- they took the Xenomorphs out put the black goo in mm. And um, had loads of. He basically made it about a man's search for God, a man's search for his creator, and put an existential spin on it, which is fair enough because it makes the film a lot richer. And I do like the fact that that girl's faith is a huge part of the film. Yeah. It, it's, it's fantastic. But you take that away from a script that was basically aliens. Mm. And th- there's. Do um, you know the scene where she has the abortion yeah. and yeah. it pulls the squid out of her? Yeah, and throws thrill about. I think they call yeah, it. sorry, yeah. yeah. And she gets out of it, and that thing stays in the pod. Originally, that was a xenomorph. Yeah, and it takes it out of the hair and throws the xenomorph, and she stays in the pod healing, while the xenomorph goes round, kills people, and comes back to look at it, and then goes off and kills someone else, and she's in the pod healing for hours, and this thing's out just destroying everyone. That sounds cool. And mm. there's a chest burst during a sex scene as well. Oh. When she has sex with that guy, yeah. his chest explodes. That when she gets the thing in it, it's yeah. the boss. That, does, get, that, that sounds crazy, but it does sound good. Yeah, yeah. And it's a, it's a good script, and it's a shame they, they changed so much of it. And when you watch the film with the writer's commentary, yeah. Spates and Lindelof must have recorded in separate rooms because they fade them in and out and they never talk to each other. And John Spates is very much like, well, they, you've changed this and they've changed that. See, I think. I think one of the dang- I think one of the dangers of having is an out and out alien film and putting the xenomorphs in it, I think they were worried of the reaction of if it wasn't as good as the other aliens films because you've seen the reactions yeah. of the likes of Alien Resurrection and Alien Free. So I think they bottled it there and gone, let's let's pull I think it was just Ridley wants to change it. I, I think, think they just also film. wanted something different, didn't he? It's just Ridley Scott wanted I think difference. people because of the other alien films, you'd you'd seen aliens in their full flesh and blood now, you'd yeah. seen them totally 
Did we? Because all when you think of alien, and then aliens, you never got to see an alien pretty much in full light or anything like that no, until you, you saw the other. Uh, well, basically, alien resurrection, really. Uh, even and then, I think it was only underwater, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, and I think then, so I think they wanted to come back to the mystery of everything, and so they probably just changed things. Did, Did the religious aspect work for you? Yeah. Did yeah. you like that? Yeah, yeah, I loved that that whole film. I'm not just saying it was it was okay. It was all right. I really loved the I, film. I, I loved, I loved everything about it. Unapologetic, really. No, yeah, it's it, it's a great film. Um, do you think it needed the xenomorph at the end, though? No. I don't think it did. I think it needed something, but I'm not sure it needed yeah. whatever that thing was. Because it was like short. It was a deacon again, a religious name for mm. for whatever it was, and the weird little cameo of Patrick Night Owl. Ah, oh. what's his name? Patrick Wilson. Yeah, all right. And you know when when yeah. she's it's been a while since when she's lying it. in the in this hyper oh, chamber, yeah. and David's reading their dreams behind their back. Ah, uh, her dad is Patrick Wilson. That from Watchmen. was right. originally in the Alien novelization. In the books. Was it really? Yeah, so all the way back to the, the novelization, that's in there. They have so these dream things. And that's where they've taken that from. Yeah. So. I, I just think it was... Because um, I got it after Prometheus, and it, I think it was my mate who passed it to me, and he went, yeah, you can have that. It's a battered alien book, but Alan's me being Foster. a big... Yeah, me being yeah. a big alien fan, I was like, oh, thank you. <laughs> so I was reading it, and I was going, hang on. He wrote some cracking yeah, books, Alan Dean Foster. He does well, especially The Thing. He does film novelizations, mm-hmm. a Star Wars one. Have you ever read his uh, Splinter of the Mind's Eye? No. He wrote a sequel to Star Wars. Oh, were, sorry, yes. While they were making Empire Strikes Back. And right. they couldn't use certain things in yeah. it. Yeah. Han, Han yeah. Solo's not in it. Yeah. <laughs> so, essentially, that thing is a xenomorph, isn't it? Yes. It, it's, 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 yeah. Yeah. it's a precursor to the yeah, xenomorph. It looks it's like they wanted to get it in there, didn't they? Did it was the, a, the alien film that had the deepest meaning. And I, I really firmly believe that, like, the reason that he changed it was to put a bigger spin on it. Like, the whole thing, like, I've never seen a film that was made to answer questions leave so many things yeah, unanswered. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, the whole thing, where did they come from? What are they? That's all. That's what you were expecting to know. And he still doesn't tell still you. Still doesn't yeah. still don't know. I mean... And you get glimpses of, of where it's going. It's similar to the first Alien, in that they show you some stuff but just a dangle and take it away. I mean, uh, it, it, it did work for me. Um, the set designs, again, were absolutely fantastic. It was great to see what the space jockey actually was. Yeah. I When I saw it, I didn't feel like, oh, no, it shouldn't be like that. You know, like I'd had a preconception of what it wa- was yeah. and that. When I seen it work, I thought, oh, that's great. So that's how it works and that. Mm. Um, I thought I found the engineers were quite scary. Yeah. In the fact of when David is on the comms to her, and he's like, he's coming for you, and it's racing yeah. and opening the door, I felt the tension of that moment. I was like, I don't know what it is. I think it's that primordial thing of something being bigger than yeah. you that you yeah. can't physically stop. Uh, like, the same with Attack on Titan. I was thinking that, Attack on Titan. Do you, do you know what I mean? It's something physical. Well, that bit that it follows. Yeah. That scared the life out of me, that. Um, but yeah, it, it did work for me. I did like all the black goo and I stuff. I did, I loved the scene where they've got the holographic kind of thing going on. Yeah. And you know what I mean? They're all crap on themselves. No, the actually already. when they're getting chased. Oh, okay. In the air. Oh, yeah, like like the security Yeah, David going. does it and he, yeah. you know, he, he, he's like, That's David, right, yeah. what are you doing? And he's I love that it. David always seems to know a little bit more than oh. he's letting on. Yeah. yeah. What does he think of the cast? Brilliant. Spot on. Perfect. Everyone in that cast is brilliant. From Idris Elba as the pilot to Charlie's Theron. Did you ever think Charlie's Theron was a robot? No. I, I, I did think she I did. Until there she was hints to it, wasn't Until there, she yeah. wanted to smash Idris Elba, I thought yeah. she was a robot. Yeah. Because yeah. no. she just never there kept, seems to be any emotion there. No. No. So I think Rid- that was the point. kept changing his answer. People kept asking him, is it a prequel? Yeah, is it a sequel? It. And he kept saying, yeah, it's a prequel. No, it's a sequel. It's, it's, yeah. it's own thing. It was a mind bender, wasn't it? And yeah. now they've, with Alien Covenant coming next year, the only they've got no Mira Pass and she's come back. Uh, they back. left that right up. And Fastbender's coming back yeah. as well. Fastbender was always coming back. I, don't, I mean, I know they both had contracts and that, but she weren't mentioned until the last yeah, minute. I, I, that worried me that because yeah. I wanted her to come back. The idea of that film being her with his head in a backpack yeah. fighting across an alien land—it just yeah. seems so. I mean, are we gonna see? Maybe 
one of the colonies of the engineers and it has been taken over by the xenomorphs because they're cause screwed up. The, the original thing was going to be called Paradise, wasn't it? Yeah. Because they were looking for the... the Paradise Lost, Lost, wasn't it? Yeah. Because yeah. they're looking for the... Uh, well, again, another religious metaphor. And mm. then it's called Covenant, which is... <laughs> you couldn't get more religious. Mm. Or, or, I don't know what... It, yeah, I think it's the whole creation aspect of it. Mm. Do you think this is intended to be a trilogy? Or do you think he's just going to see how this one gets on? I think he's going to try to tie it all up. I hope so. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think we need a third Prometheus film. I think this would be nice. Just well, you never film. know where this goes. You yeah. might change your mind in it and go. An Avatar, there'll be about twenty of them. Are we are we looking forward to Alien Covenant? Yeah, I yeah, am. yeah, hundred yeah. percent. I I like Prometheus, but there are a few things that niggle me that I didn't like in the film. Good. Well, I think I mentioned this in one of our videos a while ago. First one was where two guys are in the bit where all the pods are in the in, in the ship. Yeah, and uh, this snake yeah. tentacle thing comes up, looks horrible, and he's going, "Hey, hello, hello," <laughs> leaning over to it, just going closer to it, going, "Hey, how you doing?" He's about to give it a cracker or something like that, <laughs> and just <laughs> in his face, just like, "No, you would never do that." You know, he's, he's a biologist. That guy. He is yeah, the biologist. Yeah. So I, I think you could, could argue. argue. No, he's an idiot. He yeah. is an idiot, but I think people would argue he's a biologist, and this is the first kind of alien life form they've seen. Has yeah. he never watched an alien film in his life? Yeah, I don't mean alien film. <laughs> I mean like an alien film. So you should have watched Jurassic Park. That's what it was like to me. Stupid idiots. Well, the, the get them getting lost when he's with the geologists. Yeah, just, yeah exactly. That's yeah. another one. Yeah. yeah and then a, there's the one where Fassbender sticks... The sandstorm pushes them back in though, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is. Fassbender's take, got, take that's shelter. brilliant, that bit. That this is yeah. brilliant outside. Fassbender's got the drink and he goes Loop, with his finger yeah. with the little black goo. And then gives it. How did he not notice? He just put his finger in the drink. He's always got it like that, so yeah. he's doing it. No, don't and make excuses. He no, should I like that. that. I, I, again, I like that bit. He really, he's synthetic. You're not gonna think he's unhygienic mm. in that because he's synthetic. He's he's your sub, he's like happy birthday, Paulie. He does what you tell him. <laughs> happy birthday, Paulie. Yeah. And the guy's bladded anyway. Yeah, he is. That's yeah. True. Uh, That's did, true. did you think some of the horror? Concept was lost in Prometheus. I thought it was. It had more horror than I expected. It built up. To I didn't. It, really. I didn't expect it to turn into bloody Halloween or Friday the Thirteenth at the end. Mm -hmm. I thought that some some parts of it. Don't get me wrong. That there was horror aspects of it there. But I thought sometimes it was like Indiana Jones in space. That's yeah, nice. it was like Planet of the Vampires yeah, with yeah. their lemon lemon pipe. A lot of the beginning was where they're looking for all the symbols and stuff. Yeah. 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 I liked it. I liked all. The, I loved the way it was shot. Ridus has got a great eye for the camera. Yeah. And um, then his little Wrigley Scott coming out of big Tom Hardy's yeah, eye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was beautifully done. The three D is brilliant. If you if you get the three D Blu Ray, get yeah. it. If you watch it in three D, get it. Cause it's fantastic. I faked being sick to leave work early to go yeah. and buy that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So I, so I had a bad stomach. Went straight yeah. into HMV and bought it. <laughs> so are we going to rank them? I've already said mine. I think didn't well, I? want me to rank mine first then. And yeah. Then go around. Go on. Right yeah. for me. Number one, Prometheus, Unclean, Unclean, and Resurrection. And then the others? Well, I've, I've only seen Alien Vapor. Right, at the bottom. So I've not seen Requiem. I'd say 2, 1, 3, Prometheus, and then I'd stick Resurrection and all that down the bottom. Okay. <laughs> they literally, yeah. I don't care what order. They, you know what, day. Resurrection is above the ABP films. Yeah. I'd give it that. If you're just gonna give me the, you know, the standalone saga, saga I would say in order: in Alien, the, Aliens, Alien Three, and then Alien Resurrection. Res Prometheus is in that list, but with all the new films like the AVPs and Prometheus, I, I would put Prometheus as third. Yeah. Then uh, Alien Three, and then Alien Resurrection, and then um, one and two. Uh, the, the probably the Re Requiem before. Uh, AVP. A AVP. Cool. Right, Ben. Um, I'd say Aliens, Alien, Prometheus, Alien Resurrection, Alien Three, wow. AVP, and AVPR. Alien Three, that far down. I I love Prometheus. I yeah. really love Prometheus. It's one of them films that I enjoy, and I don't know why. I just I've watched it loads of times. 
it, if the atm- it feels atmospheric. The soundtrack's amazing. It's beautiful to the look at. The visuals, that bit where it's filmed in Iceland at the well, beginning. Well, can you remember the first image you released from it? It was basically the team standing against this great big backdrop. Yeah. And I just remember thinking, wow, I cannot wait to see that film. Yeah. And the whole film was just... Glorious. It yeah. was just scene after scene of shots like that. Yeah. It was, the, it was like the... It was like the walking done in um, Lord of the Rings, but there wasn't as much of it. I just, I didn't quite get why no one liked it as much as I did. Because I think the general audience were going expecting to see an out and out alien film. And it just it wasn't but yeah. he didn't once advertise it as an alien movie. No, the, yeah, well, the trailers, did, the, media, the media. Oh, yeah, but, but the, 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 the hype around it. No, no. But I went. He kept changing I his never answers ex- for everything. Yeah. I never expected a Xenomorph alien film. But I expect it to be in the universe. A general audience is going to expect, if you think it's hinted to an alien film, you're going to expect to see Xenomorphs. Do you think that's why they just tagged it on at the end? Just to... Yes. But I think there's also... Gen- that was for the general audience, though. As well, like you say, there's so many answered, unanswered questions and it. it just brings up more questions. And I don't think a lot of people like that now. Do, a lot of people th- like everything tied in a little Have bow. you got the 3D Blu-ray, yeah? Yeah. Have you seen what's on the front cover, what it says? Questions will be answered. Yeah, a little but, sticker just to yeah. say, don't worry, we'll, we'll tell you what happened <laughs> eventually. <laughs> yeah. No. Now, it was the guy, the, the worst bit for me was the guy going to the penis length thing with the vagina face going, hello, come here, have a cookie, and then killing them. But then you see penis length thing with a vagina face and you're thinking they're going back to their roots. <laughs> yeah. yeah you just don't go up to it going, here, I'll have a cookie. Hey, it's not an Ewok. I thought that bit with the acid goes on to the actual guy's Helmet and it yeah. melts yeah. in. I thought that was horrific, but looked fantastic. Yeah, yeah it had everything you wanted. It for, yeah. for me. You know what? The one thing I will say is when the is a five burn or something that five, comes back to five the field. ship, five field, and he's mutated because yeah. the black goo. It was better done on the deleted scenes. Yes, it was because the deleted scenes was all practical. Yeah, and he looked more alien like. It was like the thing. suit looked more like it being more like a xenomorph rather than that. Yeah, because in, in the film it looked like he just got his yoga move wrong. Didn't he was it? like a zombie burn victim, whereas yeah. he was a monster originally. Yeah, I do. I do like the weapons in there as well. You don't see them much, but they they look great. It's like this blue flare when the fire, and I was like, ah. everything about it is cool. It, it's just stylish, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It's just an amazing franchise, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Overall, it's it's done so yeah. much for sci-fi. Yeah. In yeah. general. And if they finally get the stones to make Alien versus Predator versus Batman versus Superman, <laughs> I'll be well in. You'll tell you what the one book I've never read in the Alien kind of franchise is Alien versus Terminator versus Predator. Wow. It's That's... it's it's one I want to get. Because it looks cool, imagine the Predator, uh, I mean the Terminator fighting an alien. I, I, I don't think I can. <laughs> Come with me if you want to live. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you think of the alien films? Which are your favourites? Which are your favourite moments from the aliens films? And which are your favourite characters? Tweet us. Give us your answers to those questions. And uh, thanks for listening. Final report of the commercial podcast, Super Nerds UK. Third officer reporting. The other members of the crew, Tim, Ian, Bainsey, John and Captain Sy are all dead. Cargo and ship are destroyed. I should reach the frontier in about six weeks, and with a little luck, the network will pick me up, like me on Facebook, subscribe to me on iTunes, and leave a lovely five-star review. This is Ben, last survivor of the Super Nerds UK podcast, signing off. <laughs>